so honored to be part of this great Washington, D.C. tradition. On April 11th, the museum will celebrate the 10th anniversary of our opening here on Pennsylvania Avenue. And today marks the 10th consecutive year that we have had the privilege of kicking off the Cherry Blossom Festival with the announcement of the peak blooming season. In the spirit of the season, on April 13th, we're hosting our first Museum Nights event of the year, and we're bringing back the Cherry Blossom Festival theme that was so popular last year. I hope you all will be able to join us. The museum is so thrilled to be part of the DC tourism community. We proudly support Destination DC, Events DC, the Cherry Blossom Festival, and all the fantastic museums, hotels, restaurants, and attractions in our city. I thank you all for being here, and the museum extends a special thanks to Diana Mayhew and her team for the tireless work they put into bringing magic to the nation's capital. Thank you. Excited. Good morning, everyone. I'm Diana Mayhew, president of the National Cherry Blossom Festival. Jan, museum, thank you so much for having us here again as our way to celebrate spring. The video introduction you just saw is just a glimpse of the 2018 festival. The National Cherry Blossom Festival is about engaging in new, energizing experiences, taking that transformational celebration from the tidal basin to a city and region in bloom for four weeks. We're so looking forward to presenting diverse and dynamic programming, incorporating art, music, and play throughout the entire festival, thanks to collaborations with long-standing and new partnerships. There's so many new exciting elements featured in our traditional favorites, as well as new events this year. The Blossom Bash concert presented by iHeartRadio, the first annual Blossom Tennis Tournament, transformation of the fireworks festival to Petapalooza at the Wharf, and yoga even on Freedom Plaza. So there's so much, and we invite you all to get amped up for spring as we are. We're actually amped up for spring the day after the festival, starting for 2019. 
The event and schedule details are in the brochure that's at your seats, also in the press releases in your media kits, and by visiting nationalcherryblossomfestival.org. Of course, the National Cherry Blossom Festival could not do what we need to do without our partners, stakeholders, sponsors. We want to especially thank Rich Bradley, the chairman of the board for the National Cherry Blossom Festival, all of our board members, our partners, the DC government, the Japanese embassy, National Cherry Blossom Festival, leadership circle sponsors, Events DC, ANA, our host sponsors, Downtown DC Business Improvement District, Trade Center Management Associates, the Wharf, and the Japan National Tourism Association, and all of the many other sponsors that you'll see listed here and you saw on the screen earlier. Thank you very much for being here and for supporting us. The National Cherry Blossom Festival welcomes over 1.5 million attendees each year, creating engaging and memorable moments. We invite people to share those moments, past or present, by using the hashtag BlossomMoments18 for a chance to win two round-trip tickets to Tokyo Compliments of ANA. Our springtime hospitality is expanding this year. If you're planning to bring your dog to festival events, we'll be ready with pet perks, tips, and comfort stations, thanks to our new partnership with Mars Pet Care and Better Cities for Pets program. We're working very closely with our transportation partners for convenient options for everyone to come down and enjoy the blossoms and all of the festival events without a lot of congestion. Metro is pausing track work during the festival. You can get there for a dollar from the National Mall on the circulator that rides around the Tidal Basin. Water taxi, so you could even get there by boat from Alexandria, National Harbor, the wharf, Georgetown, with all the water taxis that are available now. Take your bike. Capital share, bike share is an amazing option. And even if you are taking a bike and you're not using capital bike share, there's 1,500 underground parking spaces, bike parking spaces at the wharf. Visit Go DC Go for more information about the district's transportation. And of course, if you do need to drive, our preferred parking partner this year is Spot Hero, so reserve in advance to make it more convenient. Of course, Destination DC is, is our hospitality partner, marketing partner for the city. They're always ready to give you information, help you with hotel reservations, and you can call 877-44-BLOOM for more specific information. So that's just a quick glimpse. I think our video says it all, and um, I would love to spend some time today introducing you some of our key partners with some other messages to share with you. Uh, the energy and the spirit of our visitors and residents are what have, what's transformed Washington, D.C. in one of the most desirable event destinations in the world. Events D.C. is the face of conventions, sports, entertainment, and cultural events in our nation's capital. And we're very happy to have with us today the President and CEO of Events D.C., Greg O'Dell. Well, good morning, D.C. I know you all can do better than that. Good morning, D.C. All right much better. So uh, on behalf of our board of directors and our staff, we are so excited to once again partner and be here today for this kickoff for the National Cherry Blossom Festival. You know, for us, for Events DC, as the official convention and sports authority, our job is to create these amazing event experiences, and we do so in venues all across the city. Uh, we're excited to, to announce that not only are we doing it traditionally at Convention Center, RFK and others, but we're actually going to build a new entertainment sports arena that will open in the fall. And so we're excited not only because of the great program that we're going to have there, but also represents now doing it across the river in Ward 8. And so as I know, Diana, who I'm sure will give me a phone call and say, next year we need to do some programming at the Cherry Blossom Festival at that arena. So I look forward to your call and we welcome it because we're very excited about what's going to happen across that arena. But in all seriousness, one of the things we, we do is also support great organizations you know, that put on large festivals that really drive economic impact for the city. And you've heard me say this many, many times, but I, I can't say it enough. 
There's no better partner than Diana, her staff, and the board of directors for their continued success in what they do with the festival. So please give them another round of applause for all their great success. So for Events DC, we're excited to be presenting the parade again this year. That will occur on Saturday, April 14th. Uh, it will be syndicated nationwide and also online uh, stream, live stream as well. Um, and as I've said before, this parade gets better and better every year, and this year is no exception. So as you saw in the video, and I'm happy to announce, uh, the Grand Marshal will be none other than the superstar of the ABC The Chew, Carla Hall. Please give a round of applause. We all love Carla. But there's more. We're also going to have voice contestants uh, Billy uh, Gilman, Sarah Potenda. We'll have a country singer, Ty Hurden. And then last but not least, my favorite, as was also shown in the video, the throwback R&B artist uh, Arrested Development. So they will actually be on the Events DC float. I'm not quite sure how we're going to have all those people on one float. Uh, but we're excited. It will be one big party, but you certainly don't want to miss the parade. Uh, lots of great entertainment and certainly for everyone to enjoy. Also, what's worth, uh, noteworthy this year is that the uh, festival's artists, the official artists of the festival, is also going to be participating in creating those floats as well this year. So we're very excited about that as well. Her name is Maggie O'Neill, by the way, and we're excited. Please give Maggie a round of applause as well. So last and just in closing, I want to say that, and I, Diana has echoed this many, many times, that across the globe we should all be proud is that people equate the spring with Washington, D.C., not just here in Washington, not just the nation, but across the globe. So we're very excited about what this festival has become. But I also say I think it means a lot to us who are in Washington, D.C., because it really is a rebirth for all of us. And so as we see the cherry blossoms bloom, we're also in bloom as we're showing this great city that we all have come to love and we're so proud of. So thank you so much. Have a great day today. Look forward to seeing everybody at the parade as well and the festival. Thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. And just to let you know, Shinetti and I are already on the new venue, so thank you. We got it. Uh, again, Vince, with Events DC's support presenting the parade, we've been able to do a lot of new, fun, creative things, taking the parade to a different level. The parade has been nationally syndicated for the last few years, and this year we actually um, aired some new markets. It will be shown in Puerto Rico as well as the Virgin Islands as well. So, Greg, thank you for everything you and your organization do for the festival. We greatly appreciate it. So this year's festival celebrates the 106th anniversary of the gift of trees from Tokyo to Washington, D.C. We continue to honor the tradition and the roots of the festival, showcasing Japanese arts and culture with the enthusiastic support of the entire embassy and their team. At this time, it's my great pleasure to introduce you, Mr. Takaharu Shimada. Uh, this, is, this is actually Minister Shimada's second assignment here in Washington with the festival. Ten years ago, I think, he was actually a staffer, and you know, we got to bug him in a lot of different ways. Now he's like our boss. So, <laughs> so we've learned to be really nice to him. So we do appreciate everything, and at this time, please, Minister Shimada, would you like to come up and say a few words? Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to come back here again to celebrate our National Cherry Blossom Festival with you. Thank you for coming this morning to hear about the exciting activities the Embassy of Japan has planned for the 2018 National Cherry Blossom Festival. And before I forget, uh, as a small token of appreciation for the press people today gathering here this morning, uh, I put a small Wagashi, this is a Japanese sweet for you inside the uh, press kit. You know, this is the uh, cherry blossom shape. And this is the, you know, the product of the Matsukawaya, who opened the uh, pop up at the uh, Teeth Pen Quarter store. It is delicious. This is not uh, soap, so don't, don't wash hands with it. Eat it today. <laughs> but anyway, this year, we got art, music, food, and new ambassador lined up for the biggest celebration of U.S.-Japan friendship in the United States. 
Thank you for giving me this opportunity to tell you about all the way you can join in the fun. First, we got art. Starting March 28th, the Embassy Job of Japan is putting on a signature exhibition at our Japan Information and Culture Center called Evolving Traditions, Painting of Moran, Paintings of Wonder from Japan. We will be displaying works by a modern artist, Mr. Yuki Ideguchi, some Meiji era masterpieces from the embassy's collection. These pieces are usually kept in private spaces at the ambassador's residence, not the, at the embassy, so even I happen, to got, I happen to get to see them often. Then we've, we've got music. Starting with the opening ceremony performance, pa performers and uh, continuing with the fifth annual Japanese jazz series at Blues Alley in Georgetown, and the pop singer Kana Uemura on the Kennedy Center Millennium Stage. We have world-class entertainment coming your way. All of the, all of the details are in your press release, press release and will be available on the Embassy's Japan Information and Culture Center website. Don't forget to pray. There will be food, sake, and more at the Sakura Matsuri Japanese Street Festival. We are honored that our close partner, the Japan America Society of Washington, D.C., is bringing, bringing the street festival back to the uh, Pennsylvania Avenue between 3rd and 7th Street this year on April 14th, right next to the parade. They will have beer and sake tastings, a cosplay costume show, musical and cultural performances, food stalls, and so much more. It is exciting to have them back in the, here, the heart of the city, and I, I encourage you to buy your ticket online in advance so that you can skip the line and get right to the fun. And finally, our biggest announcement, not AMP, but AMB. The Embassy of Japan is ex expecting a new ambassador to arrive in just in time for the festival. His name is Shinsuke Sugiyama, and he's bringing his lovely wife, Yoko. We look forward to introducing him, all of you, although we will all miss current ambassador and Mrs. Sasai. Now, I know we are all eager to hear the announcement from the National Park Service about the peak bloom. So I will end with my thanks to Mayor and the people of Washington, D.C., the National Cherry Blossom Festival, the Japan American Society of Washington, D.C., the general sponsors who support these events, and of course, the National Park Service, who care for the trees and without whom we will have nothing to celebrate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Shimada, and the entire staff here from the Embassy for all you do. I think many of you have heard me say this before, um, but I'm going to say it again. It's worth repeating. The National Cherry Blossom Festival, although it's beloved and known nationally and globally, it is still our hometown event. It is important for us to engage the residents, to make sure we offer fabulous amenities for our city, and everybody knows that it belongs to Washington, D.C., so at this time, it's really my pleasure, again, to thank the District of Columbia for the incredible support that constantly helps us with services and funding to get what we need to get done. Um, but also, uh, we want to thank the mayor and for everything that she does. She's actually been an attendee for many years as a resident and now leads our beautiful city in this transformation that we're experiencing. Mayor Bowser. Well, good morning, everybody. I am very delighted to be here and just as anxious as all of you uh, to hear about our peak bloom dates. Uh, let me thank Diana Mayhew and everybody with the National Cherry Blossom Festival. Give them a big round of applause for 
the excitement uh, that they help us usher into Washington, D.C. each and every year. I know it's a labor of love. Uh, it also uh, real, a year-long activity in terms of your planning on how we can make the festival uh, even more exciting and even more far-reaching across all eight wards of Washington, D.C. So thank you for that. Uh, let me also recognize the Secretary of the District of Columbia, Lauren Vaughn. Uh, and Secretary Vaughn has just been out standing uh, in uh, the district's outreach uh, to our sister cities around the world and making sure uh, all of our world partners know exactly what we're doing uh, in Washington, D.C. as our nation's representative uh, to the world. Uh, and Greg O'Dell, uh, we so appreciate all that you do uh, at the Washington Convention Center and Events D.C. More than 20 million people visit Washington, D.C. each and every year from around our nation and around the world. Uh, we like to think that we roll out the red carpet, not or pink carpet, as it were, not just during uh, cherry blossom season, but all year, uh, so that you can see our nation's monuments and memorials, but also visit our, our wonderful neighborhoods. Uh, we are very proud of the, not only the hotel properties here in our city, the restaurants here in our city, um, but the arts and cultural events uh, that make us uh, a very diverse and proud town. Uh, and the National Cherry Blossom Festival is a part of that. We're only 20 days away from spring, uh, and that is almost synonymous uh, with the Cherry Blossom Festival. And in this festival, we can uh, celebrate uh, our city's great friendship uh, with Japan. So I want to thank you, Mr. Minister, for being here uh, to, to represent the people of Japan and the wonderful gift uh, that we commemorate each and every year. Uh, so as we approach spring uh, and all of the promise of a fresh start that it brings each and every year, I hope that you will uh, tell your friends and neighbors and associates and business partners about the Cherry Blossom Festival. Uh, the big parades, being able to go and see our beautiful trees, uh, but also the events that the festival has planned uh, in other parts of the city. We believe firmly uh, that you will know what we know, uh, how unique a city uh, Washington, D.C. is, a growing city, uh, but also very rich uh, in history. Uh, and we believe in investing in that history uh, and uh, celebrating our 106 year old gift uh, from the people of Japan is one way to do that. So please enjoy the Cherry Blossom Festival. Uh, not only do I uh, look forward to hearing about our peak season, we hope it's really long, a really long peak season uh, to enjoy uh, the trees. So thank you, Diana, for having us here. Okay, just remember, whatever the peak is, the blossoms bloom before and they bloom after. So I like to think of it as our blooming period extended. And I know you've been waiting for this announcement, but uh, we'll be bringing up Karen in just one second. But just to remind you that the National Park Service, they are the caretakers for this treasured cherry blossoms and their critical support and partnership of the National Cherry Blossom Festival. They give amazing TLC. The tree crew are out there year-round taking care of those trees, and I'd like to applaud the tree crew as well. <laughs> also, we have here today Catherine Townsend from the Trust for the National Mall. It's here someplace. I just wanted to point her out. Uh, we, the festival, definitely support that organization because we are directly supporting the National Trust Cherry Tree Endowment. And that is a fund that we are helping to support to care for the trees for the rest of their lives. So if the budget allows to have the trees pruned once a year, then this endowment will help two or three times a year to keep the trees in good condition. And the pin that you have today is a representative of a support for the tree fund. Uh, any of the merchandise that is supported and purchased by the National Cherry Blossom Festival supports the festival, and then a percentage of all the pins go to that 
uh, tree fund. So just to, to let you know that, you can actually go to the museum to buy merchandise. You can go to Union Station to buy festival merchandise. So again, um, it looks beautiful, it feels beautiful, and you're supporting. So at this time, it is my pleasure to bring up Karen Cucurillo, Acting Superintendent, National Mall Memorial Parks, to give you the overview of the National Park Service's activities during this year's festival and the much-anticipated bloom date. Hello. Oh, my. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Diana. Um, I'm so happy to be here on behalf of the National Park Service to be part of our nation's great springtime celebration. We are so proud to once again be partners with the National Cherry Blossom Festival in welcoming visitors from around the world who come here to our nation's capital to witness this incredible fleeting beauty of cherry blossoms. The staff of the National Mall and Memorial Parks takes great pride in really caring for the stars of this festival, right? And those are our cherry trees. We have 3,700 of them uh, ready to open up this city into pink, as I would like to say. And you know what? They're really rooted in the natural and, and cultural, um, uh, their natural cultural treasures of the city. Um, and they're rooted in history and tradition. Uh, today, uh, we have our tree crew. They were mentioned by Diana, and we have them here. Where are you guys? Raise your hand. They're a team of professional arborists who are dedicated to assure the long-term survival of the flowering cherry trees. Um, a handful, which still date back, they're still in the park, uh, they date back to when it was a gift to Japan, thank you, um, in 1912. These are your programs. They offer a full range of opportunities for you to join a park ranger, to take a walk, run, or even bicycle uh, as you learn the history about the cherry blossoms and those trees. And for our younger visitors, the Junior Ranger Activity Zone, and that's what we're going to be at the uh, Tidal Basin. Um, and it's both educational and fun, and where you can earn a special Cherry Blossom Festival Junior Ranger Badge. For more history on the Cherry Blossoms and the full schedule of National Park Service Cherry Blossom events, including the Anacostia River Festival uh, to be held uh, during the centennial celebration of the Anacostia Park, please go to nps.gov slash cherry. Okay. Is everybody ready? Okay, okay. This is the moment we've been waiting for, right? Okay. Now, the National Park, I got to say this, okay, the National Park Service team of experts. Now, we have analyzed a variety of data, including the historic record of previous peak blooms, uh, winter temperatures, the forecast for March. To determine the projected peak date. Uh, I have to, do, you know, I have to provide you with a disclaimer. Okay, you know the cherry blossom blossoms are developed. Uh, the development is dependent on the weather um, conditions. So the National Park Service horticulturists will keep you updated, and we'll be monitoring those trees and let you know um, the status as we go uh, and we get closer to the festival opening. Now, I ask you please to turn your attention to the magic board. And the projected peak dates are <laughs> March 17th to March 20th. Come on, let's be and that excited we're going to have lots of spring this this uh, month and into the capital. We are so excited about the festivals. And now I'm going to turn the podium back to Diana, who will give us a preview of what's to come during this festival. Thank you. There we go. So exciting. So. 
what does this mean? So again, thank you, Karen. So to co coincide with the blooming of the cherry trees, the National Park Service and National Cherry Blossom Festival will be ready. We're opening the Tidal Basin Welcome Area one week early. So starting on March 17th, we'll be ready with the Welcome Area, the Ranger Tours, as well as the ANA Performance Stage will kick off. All other festival events will be scheduled, will be presented as scheduled. So the great news is that the blossoms will be starting to bloom around Pink Tie Party, which is March 15th at the, at, uh, the Ronald Reagan Building. If you haven't ha gotten your pink tie or pink dress, it's not too late. Get them. Get some tickets. We still have a few available. So again, as we conclude today's program, we want to thank Jan, Scott, and Pam, and everybody here at the museum for having us. Thank all of you for, for bringing this enthusiasm. And I absolutely need to thank my amazing team staff for putting this together and for being there every day of the year. So thank you so much.